we're trying to understand is that within the UK, we have a national legal system. And that national legal system is uh, denoted by a series of branches of government, each of which possesses a certain responsibility. Now, the UK is a member of a supranational organization known as the EU. And within that EU, there is a similar body of institutions, a similar legal order, a similar system in operation. And what you need to understand is that that system sits atop of the member state. And this is what we'll come to tomorrow. We'll speak about supremacy a little bit more. It is distinct from the Confederation in Canada. It is distinct from the Federalist system in the United States. But there are also parallels. Canada is made up of a series of provinces. Those provinces have authority over some aspects. They have legislative, they enjoy legislative competence over some aspects. But they also have a federal government that enjoys legislative competence over others. The same thing with the United States. You have a series of states and there are state matters just as there are federal matters. And the debates are often taking place between the states and the federal government, between the provinces and the federal government, and between the member states and the EU as to who has jurisdiction over what. These are where the battles, the battle lines are usually drawn. This is where we see points of tension. Because each one is effectively trying to wrestle more power, more autonomy, more independence for themselves, independence as it is understood through lawmaking. Now, as opposed to seeing this in the adversarial manner that we often inherit from the United States or even from Canada, you have to understand that within the EU, this is a purely voluntary system. The Federalist system in the United States was the product of a war. The Confederation in Canada was a product of necessity. But the EU itself was a voluntary pursuit. There was a decision made with the Council of Europe that we will harmonize aspects of our legislation around human rights, democracy, and rule of law. Following this, there were the establishment of a series of communities. We had the coal and steel community. We had the atomic community. We had the economic community. These communities, we are voluntarily, states, we are voluntarily signing up to because we would like to pursue this. There is meant to be a harmonious relationship between member states and the EU. It doesn't always work out that way, but as we said last week with regards to treaties, denunciation is always a possibility, meaning any member state can ultimately withdraw from the EU. A little more difficult for a province to withdraw from Canada, a little more difficult for a state to withdraw from the United States. But within Europe, it's not meant to be seen in this adversarial fashion in the way that it's often presented in the media. We understand that these are complementary. We are trying to harmonize because it is the advantage of all European citizens. That is the idea behind it. So when you are thinking about this, when you are studying these topics, don't necessarily see it as points of friction. There are those points of friction which we have to study, but simply see this as being another layer that's been placed on top, another layer that has siphoned off some legislative competency at the behest of member states. And that is who is acting on behalf of. Okay, so we'll leave it at that and I'll see you tomorrow.